probably aren't going to believe this, but it's time for version number 10. We've been working on rail bike for almost a full year. I had a little bit of a setback in the summer where I was kind of a MIA for a few months, but I'm back at it now. I've made a new version. I've incorporated all of the best parts of the previous version, and today we're going to test it. It's also freezing cold in case you're wondering why I'm dressed like this, and the heat inside the shop is not yet uh, up to par with my requirements to live. Let me show it to you first. The Outrigger. The Outrigger is staying the same pretty much from version 9, except if you can see, I machined the flange off this. So now I just have a big wide wheel. You'll notice that in like almost for the last three or four versions, um, the wide wheel has been discussed uh, and implemented to some extent. The reason why is that as the track varies a little bit or the, the bike goes back and forth, even you know like an inch or two, um, if you have a small outrigger wheel or a thin outrigger wheel, it ends up coming off the track and that's no good. So we're putting big long one and the flange was getting caught, believe it or not. This material is so sticky um, that as the flange got closer to the rail, if it contacted it, it would kind of like catch, like the friction was, I guess the friction coefficient was pretty high. It would catch and kind of bump up. So I've machined it off completely because we don't need guidance on the outrigger. Let's go to the front guide. The front guide now looks like this. So let's call these the extensions from the um, the axle. These have stayed the same from uh, version, I think even eight maybe. I think eight and nine both had it. We're gonna keep them the same because honestly they work well. I could probably simplify them moving forward but that's uh, no, no big deal. The main thing that we've changed is the centering guide itself. Now I want to go over this in detail on why I did this. So first of all, on all of the designs where the wheels were contacting the rail in a fashion other than like a rolling manner, so if it was contacting the side or if it was sliding, there was this little bit of friction that kept making like issues for riding. It would like pop off the rail or um, it would just not feel good or the speed wouldn't be well. So now we have the two wheels at the top that are gonna ride on the rail. And I machined two um, mini wheels for the edges. So that should take away basically all the friction force that the guide sees. So there's no more like side wheels or edge wheels or anything like that. This should roll beautifully. Now the other thing that we did is you can see it's self-leveling. I don't think it makes sense like that. So it's a little bit wonky, but basically I now don't have to use these three holes and this will self-level regardless how big the wheel is or if the rail itself is going up and down. The reason why that it's self-leveling is that this will perform at its best when it's perfectly aligned to the rail. You can imagine that if you have something traveling along this uh, surface right here and it's like going sideways, there's gonna be that friction coefficient again that's gonna like give it a little bit, uh, make it go a little bit wonky. So these two wheels are now going to settle on the track and this is going to uh, roll against the edge of the rail. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. The other thing that's nice about this is it's a nice little compact kind of like system that you can just take on and off on one of these, uh, one of these posts. So let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. We're going to the same railroad track as before, the secret railroad track. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a YouTube video with Martina Cahill. If you're looking to buy or sell a home in the GTA or Mississauga, Martina is the one to call. Okay, she's gonna help me test rail bike version number 10. We've got the gear, we've got the bike, we've got the railroad. Let's set it up. We're almost set up, we gotta do some minor adjustments, but let's go over everything again, even though I already told you about it when I was in the shop before Martina got here. The wide wheel is on the outrigger. The anti-torque device is right there. That basically is staying the same. Now the front, this is how it looks. Like I said, all this is the same as version nine. It's this right here that's changed. So the two wheels, the self-leveling device, and then the little roller. Actually, I have slots here on each side. And I'm just gonna make them a little bit wider. And then land speed rail record is the plan. Instant death. I'm good at riding the rail bike. Look how beautiful it is. 
What do you call, what do you call this voyage with the rail bike? Voyage number what? This is rail bike version number 10. Yes. Band speed record. It's been a while since I was riding the rails. How do you know what you have to adjust? <laughs> he does it. This has to be perfectly perpendicular to the rail. And my anti-torque device is off. It's a little bit off, I have to adjust it. Other than that, this isn't like, like it's not like instilling a lot of confidence. It's a little, although maybe I'm just like, being a baby about it, maybe it's fine. It does not look fine. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take it to the end, then I'm going to turn around, and then I'm going to go for a distance record. Just take it easy here. Let's get used to it. It's really leaning. It's really leaning to one side. I can feel it. It doesn't feel right. Automatically, it automatically records when you press the button. Yeah. You know? You know everything, I guess. Martina knows everything. <laughs> oh, God forbid. <laughs> Road bike speed record number 600. No derailment! Oh. Oof. Oh. Just murdered that tree. <laughs> you got a problem. You got a problem. You know what we need to do? We need to measure this. This is the problem, guys. Right now, you can see it. So we're gonna measure that. And I have to remachine the bearing areas. Oh, in case it hits that. Yeah. One inch. One inch. That's the problem. Mm. That's okay. We can definitely adjust those. That's easy. I just machine them. 2.75. I've never measured how wide the rail is in all these years. <laughs> I've also never measured this distance either. <laughs> That's the first thing I asked you, is if they were all the same. 62 and one quarter. <laughs> I've never done it. In like a full year, I never did it. Okay. It's good enough. It's good enough for a real bike. That's <laughs> Martina on the rail bike. This is probably gonna go bad. <laughs> no, I'll be right here. Oh, actually, you know what? Here, press this button right there. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, uh, yeah. Bump coming, bump coming. Yep. Oh, yeah. Like a champ. Oh, it's kind of feels kind of cool. I know. Oh, there's a bump coming. I gotta make those smaller. Keep a bit low. Do I look like an athlete? Yeah, you look pretty good actually. Like it's coming together. It actually got, it feels a bit wobbly, but not too bad. It's not too bad. Rail 
Rail bike land record, land speed record. Whoa. Whoa, so that's the dangerous part right now. Actually, so what we're going to do, it's a good point, we're actually going to take this back to the shop and I'm going to go over what changes need to be done for version 11. But generally, this is the route we're going. Let's go. So, I am going to go for the long distance rail bike record. Oh, I thought you like worked for the railroad or something, I was getting in shit. <laughs> Yeah, I built this thing. <laughs> See you, man.
world record. Let's go over some changes. Generally very happy with the current design. I kind of knew it was going to work well because uh, I'd done something similar but not with the correct components. But we've had a little bit of a jam, a little bit of a jam. So it's not as self-leveling as I'd like it, but we can work on that just by loosening the two collars on the inside. And then I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, we did some damage there. That's okay. We did achieve the world's longest rail bike ride currently. I hold that record. Martina is the first female to ever ride it, to be honest, and uh, did quite well. So I'm gonna just give you guys an update on what's gonna happen next. So I'm gonna robusticize this current design. Oh, I also have to make these shorter. I have to make these, I think, just a little bit shorter, which somebody sent me a note and told me I was gonna have to. It's hitting the connection piece. So I'm gonna make these shorter. I'm gonna make this a little bit more robust, work on the design, but generally keep it the same. And I am going to do a fully front wheel system. So right now I have the outrigger on the rear wheel and the guide on the front wheel. I am going to do the outrigger on the front wheel. Um, I don't know why I think it'll be better, but the more I think about it, I really like that idea. So I'm gonna see what that looks like in a uh, design. I gotta make a new front axle and see how to attach this, but uh, that'll be next. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.